Well, I want to thank Patrick, Chris, Mo, Eric, and John really for that you know, amazing conversation. Um, I am really pleased to moderate this session uh, that's curated and produced by our underwriter Accenture. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, retired Lieutenant General Mary Legere, former senior intelligence officer for the U.S. Army. Uh, General Legere recently joined Accenture Federal Services to bring uh, Accenture's global, secure, digital mission analytics and agile development capabilities to national defense intelligence and cyber clients. Um, so, uh, just if you don't know uh, her, I'll just give you a little bit of a background on her. She brings more than 30 years of experience leading intelligence, security, and cyber organizations, including directing the Army's enterprise of 58,000 intelligence professionals in 140 countries, commanding the Army's 17,000 person global intelligence command, and serving as the senior military intelligence officer supporting joint force commanders in Iraq and the Republic of Korea. As the Army's senior intelligence officer, she led the development and implementation of the U.S. Army's multi-billion dollar strategic plan, increasing the Army's intelligence, cyber, and security capabilities while supporting complex multidisciplinary operations across the globe. And the funniest person in INSA, funniest general, general in INSA. So, um, so we're going to continue our conversation on open source intelligence. Um, to set, set the stage, earlier this year, CIA Director John Brennan said that in an INSA event that having the ability to leverage these open source environments and tools and bring together with, you know, with clandestinely acquired information is just so enriching in terms of how we're able to understand and create new knowledge. And we just heard this last panel, but all of the things that we're able to do, um, this is really powerful and amazing uh, technology. And I think you and I are going to talk about the, the stat, like where we are with it. And so you were the G2 of the Army. Why is this topic so important? And can you share some of your perspectives on the you know, journey? You really called it a journey. So I'd love to like, kind of right. unpack that a little. Because we get a lot of questions um, from industry as to why we aren't sort of farther along with open source intelligence in the Army, and yet we're moving at a fairly deliberate pace uh, to broaden that across mm -hmm. you know, the Army and, and all the intelligence community. But you have to start someplace. And I think it's important to note that each of the formal disciplines of intelligence, signals intelligence, geo-intelligence, human intelligence, counterintelligence, most of uh, intelligence professionals start with a specialty. Except in open source intelligence, that's a specialty, a skill set that we pick up along the way in our service. Um, and so our first task is to create zealots. And most of us who were my age who came into the Army uh, during the Continental Congress, the Sons of Liberty had a woman's, <laughs> had a woman's auxiliary. Um, you know, I can remember, and there are a few general officers at Reef today, of Pete Zwack, who is a great, great, uh, our great Russian expert. You know, when we went through school, we got years and years on the INTS, except OSINT, because OSINT at the time was about exploiting publications, academics, journals, and it was not about exploiting the Internet. So the leaders uh, that graduated that are running the military today, uh, somewhere along the line, the internet came along. Uh, the army got the internet about 10 years after everybody else. So we're behind because we actually had no reason to exploit it. We were using our classified sources. And so I would say in my own journey uh, as, as, a, as an officer that sort of had a passing understanding of the importance of OSINT, within the last 15 years, everywhere I went, uh, small pockets of really creative people were figuring out how to bridge that difficult, I gotta go into the skiff, but I need, now need to get at unclassified sources. Yeah. I've gotta figure out how to bring things that are is publicly available into fuse against highly classified sources on highly classified networks. Um, and we, we, we saw those pockets uh, developing, but we didn't declare uh, hey, we really need to take a uh, look at OSINT and how we bring that out um, from a Walmart perspective, right. a steroid perspective, um, really until the last decade or so. But it is taking off. And so when I became the Army G2 in 2012 uh, and sat with our chief of staff and talked about, you know, the major things that we need to do to make sure that we stayed ahead of the enemy, we had a long discussion about open source intelligence mm -hmm. and getting out of the niche and getting out of the local, mm -hmm. but bringing really an industrial age force together of all the different disciplines very comfortable using OSINT, not feeling afraid, not being confused, not and understanding enough about the trade craft, as Mo pointed out, to, to be able to distinguish uh, the tweet that I'm sending to my husband right. that says, I'll be right home, honey, when actually I'm at the Pentagon Mall, being able to right. be able to sort that through. Um, and then 
putting the infrastructure in place that allows that ease of moving from an open source exploitation environment into highly classified systems that are going to confirm or deny, and then bringing that back down to produce at the, at the unclassified level. Um, all of what I just said uh, takes a village and it takes a plan. And in about 2012, having piloted probably for a decade in different co-coms with limited budgets and limited ideas with just great pockets of people that were innovative, the Army decided we're going to create, you know, OSINT at scale. And we're, the first thing we have to do is make sure our, our analysts are comfortable with the idea mm -hmm. that open source intelligence is something they need to value. Mm -hmm. And most of the younger generation gets it, but even the older generation uh, understood it, the power of what could be gathered when you are a, an army that is deploying with 50 to 60 other countries that you may not have mature intelligence sharing agreements, sometimes that's the only place you can do your work mm -hmm. at the unclassified open source level. So just telling them the practical reasons we needed to be involved in this, plus the vast amount of information that was available uh, was the first step. We needed to grapple with whether we were going to have a specialty or a new military occupational specialty of OSINT and OSINT only, or we were going to take all of our disciplines and make sure they understood their ability to go from highly classified into open source. And that's kind of the direction that we've chosen to go. So where are we now? Let's actually, so you know, if, if OSINT were a film, yes. where if it were a movie, where are we in, so in the movie or state of play? We've talked about this, OSINT is like the Titanic, the longest movie that has ever been made. In fact, I think its initial run is still running in the theater. <laughs> For those of you who went with your spouses, my husband turned to me and said out loud at the third hour, when is this boat going to sink? Um, so I would say that if, if that's the analogy, um, we are well into uh, the, the romance. Yeah. The orchestra is assembling on the deck. We all know we're going to hit the iceberg eventually. We still have a while to go. And I think the things we're focused on, and, and, and I talk about the Army, but understand there's 17 agencies all moving in the same direction at various states of progress. So clearly, this, the CIA, which has been the functional manager for open source for themselves, but now for all of us as our corporate lead, uh, they are setting the conditions for expansion. Um, each of the services in a time when there is no new start, there are no more people, there are no budgets, there is nothing but demand. We have to figure out a way to manage that evolution of a new skill set, the new infrastructure, the new training, the new trade craft, the certification within existing budgets, and each of us are in a slightly different place. But the Army uh, has created an OSIN office, has adjusted its curriculum, has ensured that new, new uh, um, entrants into our intelligence disciplines get a, their, their be first beginning of OSINT training. And then we have a ninja process where anyone, any operation, any unit that would like to use OSINT, should use OSINT, will get certified uh, on the trade craft that the Open Source Center and CIA have approved. Um, I, you know, I mentioned to her before, when you bring in a new discipline, to an army whose average age is 21 or 22, uh, you got to be very conscious of making sure they understand the left and right limits of how open source intelligence still requires compliance mm -hmm. with intelligence law. And so that involves we, training, that right, a lot we, of training. We call it, you know, the incentive is to avoid the orange jumpsuit, <laughs> is to ensure <laughs> that the army, yet again, does not set the precedent for yeah. more intelligence law right. because we're seeing the problem ahead of time, we're identifying right. it, and we're training our way away from it. And we, so we're being very, very disciplined in terms of how uh, we, we proceed. Uh, general Ashley was the commanding general of the intelligence school. He is now the G2 of the army. There's tremendous continuity, and I think, honestly, during his tenure, there'll be so much progress. Also, at the same time, I, I want to put a plug in for the Open Source Center, the Open Source Enterprise. You know, CIA has been the center point for open source for the intelligence community, you know, since its inception. CIA has a, its Open Source Center has a really big job of supporting a really important agency. They are now the functional lead for every agency on open source. 
And so it's the difference between, I mentioned it, the DMV in a small town in Pittsburgh where there's about 1,500 people that want licenses to now they're the DMV potentially for the city of Los Angeles yeah. and everyone's coming in at yeah. the same time saying scale up and attend to me, take care of our needs. And they're really responding to the best of their ability. Um, and I think there's a great collective amongst the intelligence community to work with them. A, a couple of key points. One of the things to industry that we'd really like you to know is when we grow OZINT to Walmart size, uh, we would like to do it as an enterprise. We would like to not have different standards in different agencies. We would like to pay attention to the center point. We would like them to broker data for us mm -hmm. and, and potentially NGA as a huge uh, offshoot of that with commercial imagery, but have a coherence to how we get data so we're not paying for it over and over, and a coherence when we have to deal with specific issues of legal review. We would like to have repositories of known tools that have worked and known approaches. We would like to have a registry of companies like yours that are available to us when the crisis emerges and I need 27 experts assembled on you name the problem. And so we'd like to really stay organized on this. This is the latest discipline that's expanding. Mm -hmm. It's old, but now it's becoming very modern. Uh, can we learn something about the way we raise SIGINT, human, mm -hmm. um, you know, GEOINT, and do it more efficiently and faster so that we can have more capacity? I feel like we could have, I could have an hour discussion with you alone, uh, with all the, I know, and, and the, the clock yes. here is ticking, it's I know. 32 seconds. But you said something to me, and I really, I, I really think that this is maybe the, we'll end with this if, if, if you agree. Um, you mentioned the importance of connecting the dots. I mean, it's very, I mean, is that kind of, I mean, you know, you're, you're parting, give us a parting thought and maybe that is like, you know, what is one of the biggest, the biggest barriers, biggest challenges that we have with something this big and this powerful? Um, well, I, I just would like to say this is not a niche undertaking to introduce a, to introduce a discipline right. and have it available to whole of government. Every agency needs access to open source to be smarter and produce better results for a federal, for the, for the government and for the citizens of this country and everyone we partner with. So we need a strategic approach to this that is not a thousand points of light that don't come together so that we don't have awareness of how each other, each, how one another right. are solving problems. You know, I, I, I watched, you know, the, the great 60 minute special about the problem that Watson was solving yeah. for the medical, the oncologist, where just the idea of bringing together 6,000 journals every day because solutions were out there. If we proceed as an enterprise, the, the, the impact of the organization, it will, be, it will accelerate. If I have a concern, is that we've had great sponsorship in Director Clapper and Director Brennan. Director Brennan's got a really big job, but he's taking this on like his life depended on it. In the transition to the next set of great leaders, they need to stay focused on this. Uh, we, as the 17 agencies, have an obligation to support the center point mm -hmm. and to behave as a functional uh, group. To industry, understand the center point and, and don't get frustrated with us when we say, for the unified platform, here's your point of contact. It's not the Army, it's not the Navy, it's not the Marine Corps, it's the open source center. For data and analytics, we may need your help, but for the, the accumulation of data, we need it there. And then for all of us, and I think for Congress and for the American people, we need forums like this where we can discuss the implications of open source and how comfortable we are. Um, I know the patron site of open source we were getting there was, is Kim Kardashian um, and, and the tendency to share. Um, so I'll leave she's you taught us all how to share. She's, she's taught us all. We, we, we keep saying everyone should be a Kardashian of our, our adversaries. I just am very excited at a time when SIGINT will go darker and other, other methods will be get, get more difficult, this could be a great hedge to keep us safe and to keep us aware of the things that are happening uh, here and around the world. And, and I thank everybody for your interest in this topic. Well, thank you so much for, 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 for being here. And thank you all so much for, for I think, uh, hopefully this was a great uh, session. Thank you. Great. Thanks.